What is going on everybody man listen my name is Manny I'm one of the youth leaders here and it is Wednesday night we about to get this thing on and popping right Seniors you're graduating let's go Seniors you made it mama we made it you guys went from elementary to middle school now high school and you're graduating Come on somebody on the chat let's type in some clapping hands Everybody start cheering for the seniors who made it they made it so far worked so hard did so much Endured so much time and schooling. Y'all made it. We're proud of you. The way we want to celebrate you, check this out. There is a link on the bio right now. We're going to put it on this chat. There's a link on the bio. And if you are in a senior group, your leader is going to tell you, we need you to fill out that Google form to RSVP for the special things we've got for you. We've got some gifts, some goodies, some things that we're going to celebrate you especially and even some after party stuff so if you want to be a part of that we want you a part of that go ahead and sign on up now listen we're about to transition into a time where we're going to tune into this message what i need from all of us is i want to staying clear of distractions it's way too easy to get caught up with all these little things the bug you know all all the things are happening all around you we need to tune in in this moment and let us press in for the good word the Lord has for us. youth welcome to youth at home so excited to be with you guys tonight hey if you don't know me my name is Brooke and I can't wait to meet you guys if I have not met you before I can't wait to come back together hey even right now I just want to know what you can't wait to do when, when we could come back together what's one thing you can't wait to do you're ready for you can't wait to happen I know for me like I need a haircut my hair's getting along my roommates have I tried to cut my hair I'm like nope 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 so <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's opening up soon so I can't wait to do that um, another thing I can't wait for is just like challenges. Like I love it when you get to come together with, with a bunch of people and do different challenges. If you know me, I'm a very competitive person. Um, so one of the challenges I recently did back in November is called the Savage Race. Any Savage Racers in here have ever heard of it? Type in there, you know, maybe did a Tough Mudder or something like that. The thing that was a little bit different though about the Savage Race is that um, unlike any other race, it wasn't like very competitive in the sense of every man for himself but it actually was a race that required teamwork. It was a race where the obstacles were designed in such a way where in order to fulfill them, it actually helped to have people with you. I mean, I remember I was running up on this ramp and I have random strangers grabbing me, pulling me up and helping me do it. And the whole thing was designed to where you could win together. And that's what we're gonna be talking about tonight because tonight we're talking about teamwork and the reason why teamwork matters is we can't complete alone what we were actually designed to conquer together so we'll never be able to complete alone what we were designed to conquer together when it comes to this life we were designed to conquer it together to work together and so we're going to jump into nehemiah chapter 4 if you haven't been with us don't worry i'll do a little bit of a recap of where we've been um, in my Bible, it's page 402, you know, shout out Carrie, I know you got the same Bible, um, but turn to Nehemiah 4, and let me kind of give you a little bit of recap of what's been happening so far. Um, Nehemiah, he he gets this vision that he's supposed to, um, this this calling, this, this um, call from God, you know, whatever, a purpose that he feels like he's supposed to go and rebuild the wall. And the reason why this matters is, is Jerusalem, the city of Jerusalem, it was just destroyed. And Nehemiah feels like he's supposed to go and rebuild this this wall that was destroyed and um, to us you could be like oh, I don't really get why that's like a big deal but to them it was a really big deal because Nehemiah was actually bringing hope to the people because a wall being destroyed it represented defeat it represented that you were defenseless it represented shame it represented weakness and so Nehemiah was coming in and he was actually bringing a lot of hope 
And as they started to do this, you know, the king gives them the okay, they start to do this, but they start to get opposition. And we heard about this last week that when op whenever we're doing what God calls us to do, opposition is going to come our way. Whenever we're rebuilding, opposition is going to come our way. But we can take joy because we know that God is with us. We can take joy because we know that we're actually making progress. And so that's where I'm going to pick up. We're going to go into Nehemiah 4, picking up in verse 14. And we're going to hear about how Nehemiah had all of this teamwork behind him. So then I'm going to pray and I'm going to go through these verses tonight. So Jesus, I ask even right now that you would just come, that you would meet us wherever we are, God, that you would meet us in our homes, you would meet us um, in our house, wherever we're watching online, God. Holy Spirit, we invite you in. I ask that you'd even work through me right now. Use my words. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Not if you, you guys close your, your eyes when, you pray, <laughs> when you're praying on Zoom. <laughs> oh, anyway, sorry, getting distracted. So, I love what I love about this story with Nehemiah is God didn't just give Nehemiah purpose, but God gave Nehemiah people. See, this purpose wasn't something that he was supposed to do alone, but he actually had people to help him do it. Our problem is, is that we actually don't like teamwork. We're not naturally good at teamwork. I think we're all like, oh yeah, teamwork's a good idea, but we're not that great at it. We, we struggle with teamwork. We don't necessarily like being told what to do by other people. I mean, if you have a boss that tells you what to do, or even coworkers, like we kind of want to be independent. We want to do our own thing. We don't, we especially don't like it when parents tell us what to do. You know, it's like, uh, what? So like teamwork is like actually naturally difficult for us. And I think one of the roots of it can be trust. Like maybe other people have heard us. So we just, we want to do it ourselves. Um, but one of the biggest roots I think is pride. I mean, I know that's what, that's my mentality sometimes like, oh, I could do this better. And so it's hard to have teamwork in when you want to accomplish. I mean, just like two weeks ago, I ordered this French press. That's like a thing where you can make coffee in. And I've had a French press before. So I was like, oh, I could do it. And there's all these different pieces. And then I was tempted to just do it on my own, like to not even, it's not even about teamwork, but I was thinking like, oh, I got this, I got this. But the reality is, is there were actually directions in there that I could have looked at. And so I did, like I took wisdom because I didn't want my coffee to be bad. But hey, even when it comes to us and our lives, we actually have these directions that we need to follow. There's these directions that have been given to us. And when we take all of the pieces and we use them the way we're directed to use them, then it'll actually end up making the perfect cup of coffee. So that we, we can, can become the perfect cup of coffee. You know me, I love coffee. So great coffee analogy. But really, we are all these tools and God has given us directions. And tonight I'm gonna to kind of go through these directions that we need to follow. So step one is we need to uncover the picture. And that's the task, we need to uncover the picture. So um, I'm starting in verse 14. You have plenty of time to get there with me in your Bible, maybe on your Bible app. I'm gonna read verse 14 and 15. It says, don't be afraid of them. Remember the Lord who is great and awesome and fight for your brothers, your sons, your daughters, and your wives and your homes. When the enemy heard that we are aware of their plot and God has frustrated it, we, will, we all return to the wall, each of us to his own work. We all return to the wall. You see, what Nehemiah did is he uncovered the picture. He gave vision. Remember what you are fighting for. Remember that God, he is with you and you're fighting for your family. You're fighting for your houses. Remember that. Now let's go. Here's the task. He uncovers the picture and here's the task. Let's go back and build this wall. And so they go back and they remember and they have the task to build this wall. Now, I don't know if I have any um, puzzle builders in there. If you like to build puzzles, you know, just let me know in that chat. But I love making puzzles. I know quarantine has made some people start to do puzzles. The thing about puzzles is, is when you first dump out all of those pieces, I mean, it is pretty overwhelming. You're like seeing all of these different pieces spread out. And it's like, how am I going to get this to come together? But when it does come together, oh man, it's so satisfying. Like if you're anything like me, you're you're the person that doesn't want to destroy it and put it back in the box. It kind of hurts you. You want to like glue it and keep it because it's so satisfying. And when it comes to our life, we are like puzzle pieces. See, alone we're like puzzle pieces, but together we're a picture. And that's our big idea tonight. Alone you're a puzzle piece, but together we're a picture. Alone you are a piece, but together we're a picture. So you can't build without vision. You have to know the purpose. You have to know the picture, right? Um, I went to, <laughs> to staff retreat and we had this, the staff retreat, where we had these puzzle pieces and we had to build it as quick as we can. Different teams spread out everywhere. Um, the challenge was, was that not all of our pieces were in our bag. So we didn't have all of the pieces in our bag and you, you're trying to put together pieces that didn't belong to your puzzle. And so what I had to do is I had to actually walk around to other people's tables and see 
which picture belonged to what so that I knew which piece belonged where. See, I needed to know where that puzzle piece belonged, but I couldn't know where it belonged until I had the picture. The reason why this matters is because we are like pieces that belong to a picture. And if we don't know what picture we belong to, then we're never gonna truly fit in. What is your task? What is the picture that God has given you? See, maybe you want the picture of your life to look one way, but it doesn't look that way. Maybe it looks completely different than you ever thought it would. Maybe you're like, no, I, I always imagined my life looking like this. And you have like this perfect picture in mind. You know, I, I'll get people who's like, man, Brooke, like, I don't want to gossip. Like, I, I struggle with that. And it's like, okay, I, you want the picture of your life to look like this. And, and you have this idea, but maybe you're connecting your pieces with people who are also gossiping. You're connecting your pieces to the wrong friends. Or about, or, <clears throat> sorry, or there's people who struggle with lust, for instance. And the people who's like, man, like, I, I can't, I can't stop struggling with this. I don't get why I can't stop struggling with it. Maybe you can't stop struggling with it because you keep connecting to the wrong websites or you keep connecting to the wrong media. You keep connecting to the wrong TV shows and you know that you shouldn't do that. You see, step one, we have to uncover the picture. That's our, our task. But step two, we have to use our position and that's our talent. And that's picking up in verse 16. It says, from that day on, half of my men did the work while the other half were equipped with spears and shields and bows and armor. The officers posted themselves behind the people of Judah who were building the wall. Those who carried the materials did the work on one hand and held a weapon in the other. And each of the builders wore his sword at his side as he worked. With the man who sounded the trumpet, he stayed with me. That's Nehemiah who's talking. Then I said to the nobles, the officials, and the rest of the people, the work is extensive and spread out, and we are widely separated from each other along the wall. See, I, I love this because they have, they have the same purpose, but they have different positions. They all have the same purpose to build this wall, but they have different positions. Some have spears, some have bows, some have armor. Some are the ones that are actually carrying it. Some are the ones that are building it. There's this one guy who's actually only responsibility is that he's supposed to follow around Nehemiah with the trumpet and he knows that he's going to blow it when he tells him to blow it. Like, like that, that is his job. That is his task. And it's important that we know our talents wherever we get placed. See, because look at verse 19, it says, the work is extensive and spread out and we are widely separated along the wall. That kind of reminds me of where we are today, where we are spread out, where we are widely separated around this city, where we, we usually come together, but we've, we've been forced to, to separate in some ways. You see, we had to end up spreading because of, of COVID-19, but it can't help me wonder, is this actually gonna help us accomplish our purpose? Where have you been spread out to? Where has God placed you in this season? Maybe you're in a home that you're not used to being in. You're always used to being at school. Maybe you're with your aunt, your uncle. Maybe you're spending more time with siblings than ever before. Maybe you're seeing your dad around more than you ever have before. Maybe your position at your job has changed. Maybe you've gotten a new job. Maybe you've lost your job. But somehow, in some way, all of us are dealing with position changes. And what I want you to know is just because your position has changed does not mean that your purpose has changed. It's so crucial that we know this because we're always constantly transitioning in different positions. I mean, we have some middle schoolers, you're about to go to high school for the first time and we have seniors, congratulations, but you are graduating and you're, you're moving on, you're transitioning to a new spot and your position is starting to change. You know, a lot of times it's like when you think about a puzzle piece and you have a puzzle piece and you're, and you're trying so hard to get the fit in that one area and it doesn't fit but all you really need to do is turn it and what happens when you turn it is it actually starts to fit the position actually fulfills the purpose the position change fulfills the purpose and maybe even now our position change is starting to fulfill some purposes in our life what talent are you supposed to use what talent has God given you I don't have a talent. Yes, you do. For one, if you don't know your talent, you need to discover that talent because I can guarantee you have a talent. And use it. It's been so cool watching even one of um, our members at our church. Their microchurch has started to, their talent is they could sew. So they're sewing masks for people. Use your talent. Ask God, what is the talent you have for me? See, step one, we have to uncover the picture. That's our task. Step two, we have to use our position. That's the talent. And step three, we have to unite the pieces. And that's teamwork. Verse 20, it says, wherever you hear the sound of the trumpet, join us there. Our God 
will fight for us. See, I love this because Nehemiah didn't just have a plan for when they scattered, but he actually had a plan to gather. He had a plan for when they would come back together because he knew that the enemy was gonna try to attack them because that's what the enemy does. The enemy tries to isolate us and then attack us. And this is what the enemies did back then. It was like, oh, they're isolated, they're over there, I can attack them. But Nehemiah had a plan and his plan was when this trumpet blows, we are coming back together. Hey youth, our trumpet is microchurch. Every Monday night, we are blowing this trumpet. Every Monday night at eight o'clock, we're saying, hey, come back together. Let's meet in this place so that we could rally together, so that we could fight off the lies of the enemy. Maybe you've been beaten down and, and you can't even say anything, but you just need to join into a microchurch and just listen to truth. And you need people to pray for you. I've literally been in microchurch and I'm like, I have nothing. And someone just, they pray for me because I don't even have the words to pray for myself. You see, the enemy's gonna try to come against you and microchurch is that place where we actually get to rally together. You see, it's not enough to just uncover the picture. It's not enough to just use our position, but we have to actually be willing to unite the pieces. See, we'll never complete the picture until we connect the pieces because you could uncover the picture of the puzzle and you could even position them in the right places, but you won't see the complete picture until you actually connect them. Coming together helps us to connect. You see, even for me, my purpose was found in the connection. My purpose was found when I connected with other people that had the same passions as me. When I connected with people who cared about the same people groups that I cared about and who had a heart for the vulnerable and the least of these. And I, and I started to connect with them and all of a sudden my purpose was even found. The picture was made more clear as I made that connection. We have to actually unite. The application tonight, get connected. If you're not connected in micro church, get connected. Get connected in the picture that you want to be in. If you're not in that picture, if you see your life going one direction and you're, you have not gotten connected to those people, get connected. See, we have the task and we have the talent and we have the teamwork. And when you put those together, I believe that is the perfect formula for triumph. I mean, if you think about it, you could have great, you could have this task at hand, right? Even when it comes to sports, the task is let's win the championship game. We have the task and you could have the best talent and you put them together, but you lack teamwork, all of a sudden it's defeat. See, when you just take off that one ingredient, it's defeat. You see, we need teamwork to actually make it work out. Teamwork, it's more than having a common goal, but it's actually this willingness to come together towards that goal. It's not trying to do that goal on your own, but it's, it's coming together towards that goal. You see, ever since the beginning, the enemy knew that we actually needed to be connected. The enemy knew that we needed to be working together. And so what his plan was, was I'm gonna disconnect them from God. The enemy was like, you know what? I'm gonna tempt Eve to bite from this fruit that I know she shouldn't bite from, so she'll be disconnected from God. And it happened. And there was this, this disconnect that we had, but God knew that he had to get back to us, that he had to connect us. So God sent his son Jesus down to this earth to live this life for us, a perfect man who dies for us, who takes on our sins and then he dies, but he rises, he goes to heaven. And now we could have connection to God through Jesus. If we, if we confess and believe in Jesus and come to Jesus, we are actually to have that connection again. And what I love about this story is, you hear about pieces of this. A lot of you have probably even heard Jesus died on a cross, but it doesn't make sense unless you put the whole story together. When you take all of these pieces, it actually ends up making this perfect picture. Alone we're a piece, but together we're a picture. And this picture that we saw is this picture of redemption, this picture of love that we're meant to be a part of. You know, I, I just can't wait to be able to even just come back together because I can't wait to be worshiping with you guys. Like, I don't, if, if you're anything like me, you can't play any type of instrument. So it's been hard because I love just hearing like live worship. And you, you just hear like the beat of the drum. And then you hear like the strum of a guitar. And then you hear the keys playing. And individually, it just sounds, right? If you're just beating on a drum and you're just, you're just strumming on a guitar and you're doing it at random, individually, it's just a sound. But when you put it together, it's a song. And that's what we are. Individually, we're like a bunch of sounds, but if you put it together, it's a song. You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of, of just even this past week, the just injustice that we heard about with Ahmad and, and even still, like there's just, there's so many things that we need to be fighting for. But, but what ended up happening in that situation is, is a person saw this video and they started to speak up. They started to use their voice. And that one person, I think if just that one person used their voice, I think it just would have been a sound. 
But what ended up happening is a bunch of people actually started speaking up and they united, realizing, no, this is not okay. United their voices together, united their sounds together. And when we all came together, when we unite together, it becomes more than a sound, it becomes a song. And it's a song that actually reaches out to where now it can be heard. And that's what we're supposed to do as God's people. We are supposed to bring down heaven's harmony. Like we are supposed to sing that song. We're supposed to come together against these injustices. We're supposed to speak out. But we're supposed to not do it separated. The key is doing it together. And this is why Jesus, I believe Jesus prays in John 17. He's like, God, please let them come together. Please let my people be united so that they will know that you have sent me. That's wild when we think about it. So that the world will know that you have sent me. So the world will know that you have loved me, is what Jesus says in John 17. If we want people to know Jesus, the way to do it is for us to actually come together. See, the picture we've always been called to display is the picture of love. And God so loved the world that he sent his only son. God so loved the world that he showed us this display of love. And he says that we are known by his, we are going to be known by the world by how we love. We love because he first loved us in the picture. The picture we're all working towards is this, this display of love. Our ultimate picture is to display God and the love of God. See, we make up a, a bunch of different puzzles. I believe there's a bunch of us that are designed to be different things, right? We're gonna have some missionaries and we're gonna have some people that are school teachers and we're gonna have other people that are working in different fields all around, but together, it's gonna look like this. You put it together, it's this picture of love. We are a mosaic of God's love. See, alone, you're just a piece, but together we are a picture and God says we are his masterpiece. Now, students, I urge you to go and show off his artwork. I urge you to show off his love together. I love you guys. Hope you have a great night. Skirt! Don't log off just yet. We are about to get into the meat of our service, which is small groups. This is what you're going to do. GHyouth.com. You're going to scroll down. You're going to see your grade and your gender. Don't log on to a different gender or grade. That's just awkward and weird. We're also going to put the link down below in the chat, ghyouth.com. We want to see you there. This is where we get real, we get honest, we get open, and we build the community. Love you guys. God bless. We will see you next week. Jump in.